And I became uh, interested in how uh, characters in drama express their masculinity on stage and how that's, um, how they're allowed to do that in a country like Spain uh, in uh, the 16th and 17th centuries, um, where there was, it was a very stratified society. There was a, an elite. Um, and Calderón de la Barca uh, was the court dramatist for much of his life, much of the 17th century. I was interested in the construction of masculinity, how it's represented. So I looked at several plays by Calderón in which Hercules has a role. And there's one very strange play in which he cross-dresses or, or he falls asleep and, and some women cross-dress him. And when he wakes up, he's dressed in these women's clothes and he's has got grubby braids in his hair and he's crying and cowering and and i thought this is very strange because the spanish uh, habsburg monarchs claimed that they were descended from hercules and this was a court play this play was presented in uh in the court of uh, uh um, philip not philip the fourth but his son um, who, because Philip IV had died shortly before. Um, and I wondered what in the world would Calderon cross-dress Hercules, Hercules, this great figure uh, in, in Spanish uh, national consciousness. Um, Hercules, uh, uh, many of his, um, his myths take place in Spain. Uh, there are uh, ruins of um, shrines dedicated toward Hercules. There are many statues of him. There's a professional football team called El Hercules. Uh, so why would Calderon do such a, a, a thing to this character? And my sense and my interpretation was that Calderon wanted to teach the young man, the, the son actually of Philip IV in, in the audience that if he's not careful, he will he will be effeminized, and he needs this Hercules was, according to me, was cross dressed because he hated women. He rejected women, so the women got revenge by shaming him. And this Carlos the second was his name was was possibly ten years old when he saw this play, and there was a great deal of concern that he was mentally and physically damaged, unable to um, continue the, the dynasty. And Calderon wrote several plays over his lifetime in which Hercules is a character and which um, his masculinity is doubted or confirmed. Um, in this particular play I'm, I'm talking about now, um, it's called Fieras a Femina Amor, or um, love feminizes beasts, in the very end, Hercules says, oh, yes, I was wrong. And so that is the lesson for the young boy. Now, um, the rejection of women has national consequences, especially in a national figure. And so after I derived or, or ca came to this view of the importance of reproduction, the reproductivity of having offspring um, as being very central to the masculine performance of uh, the elite in Spain. I after I um, uh, had developed this uh, set of principles of, of proper masculine behavior, I turned to King Sebastian of Portugal and um, examined his performances in plays by Calderon and other dramatists. It became clear to me that Sebastian was not following the principles of proper masculinity that I've found in the plays about Hercules. He was not open to reproduction. He was not open to uh, having, uh, to, to uh, continuing the dynasty, uh, that he was fleeing from 
contact with women from from marriage and there is there is quite a lot in these uh, plays in which Sebastian of Portugal appears in which he is always stepping away from his duty to reproduce and in in some of the plays and uh, he actually um, is killed they it, it's, two of the plays dramatize his death and in one of the plays his corpse is displayed on stage so in Spain, it was very, very important to affirm that Sebastian was dead and his body was central to that affirmation. It, uh, for Sebastianistas, the Sebastianists who believed that he had survived, his body was alive and elsewhere. Um, so the place with Sebastian uh, written by Calderon, and there was one by Lope de Vega, and several of other playwrights of the 17th century, um, focus on Sebastian's obsession with invading Africa, and always confirm that he was dead and buried. So that in, in the interests of Spanish control over Portugal, it was necessary to focus on the existence of that body and to confirm that it was Sebastian's body. Uh, whereas uh, for many or some Portuguese uh, after his death, uh, they refused to believe that he had died and were, were skeptical that the body that was buried was his body and um, a, a huge mythology developed around that, uh, a, a huge myth of the survival of Sebastian lived on uh, for centuries and still is alive in, uh, in, in Brazil today, in some far off regions of Brazil today. The, so this focus on the masculinity of the, the, the gendered behavior and the expectations, the pressures that his gender exerted on Sebastian, I feel like drove him into Africa um, because he was unable to conform to the huge pressure that he have sexual relations with a female to continue the dynasty. And after his death, he, he, his only successor was an aged, infirm uh, great uncle who was a cardinal in the Catholic ch Church and not married and, and he died soon after which allowed Philip II of Spain to take the crown. Uh, so Sebastian is I think I, the way I'm reading Sebastian is as someone who was um, at the mercy of uh, standards of masculine behavior during his period that gave him no escape. He, uh, there were many, many marriages proposed to him and he managed each time to um, sidestep getting married. And he was only 24 when he finally invaded Morocco and was killed there. Um, and that was the end of Portuguese independence, basically. So that is what fascinates me about um, gender and uh, the masculinity of this figure of Hercules also, um, and of uh, the way that, that different sources, whether they're fictional sources or chronicles or private letters between an ambassador and the King of Spain about his, his, his private behavior, um, putting all these together um, brings me to the sense that Sebastian felt he had no choice. He, he felt that this was, he probably didn't think of it that way. He, he perhaps felt that he could redeem himself by invading a foreign continent and evangelizing uh, the Muslims and, and bringing about the fifth, uh, fifth and final Christian empire in which Portugal would be uh, at the head of the empire. Se você gostou, deixe o like, compartilhe e assine o canal. 
Para receber notificações de novos vídeos, clique no sininho.